For the makers who lead, success isn't measured in promises. It's measured in results. At Rockwell Automation, our 24,000 employees across the globe focus every day on delivering business results for our customers. Because with every result achieved, we realize the promise of expanding human possibilities. That's why we're Rockwell. Our customers make products and deliver solutions that touch all of our lives. And they partner with us to realize measurable, consistent, and profitable business outcomes. Delivering the real results they and their customers depend on. The people of Rockwell and our vast production technology portfolio make a real difference in industrial production quality, speed, and efficiency. Making a difference in ramping up adequate supplies of life-saving vaccines. Making a difference by helping deliver vehicles that are affordable, efficient, and safe. Making a difference by engineering sustainability into every system and solution we deliver. Because at Rockwell, we believe better is possible. And the results we deliver add value for our customers every day, in every industry we serve. Our systems connect your company end-to-end -end with data-fueled insights, improving the decisions that deliver results and expanding human possibilities. Rockwell Automation. Results achieved. Hi, I'm Bill Martin, and I'm at Rockwell Automation's World Headquarters in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'm here to figure out how does someone get started with SMART. And I thought a perfect place to start is at the new 100C contactor line here in Milwaukee on the 8th floor. This is uh, Rockwell Automation's premier manufacturing line that has a lot of different SMART machines. And it makes the whole process a uh, uh, SMART intelligent process as well. And the whole reason why they want a SMART process is to prevent unplanned downtime or minimize unplanned downtime where the operators can actually figure out that a problem may happen uh, before the actual event occurs. Um, so let's take a peek here at the, the production line. You can see exactly what a, a world-class smart production line looks like. All right, now that we've seen a smart manufacturing line running, um, it's pretty amazing how, how everything works. So one might think, huh, smart production line. I mean, it sounds rather complicated. Uh, I must need a lot of extra components, a lot of extra engineering work to make that happen. Uh, one could have that feeling, but um, is it really that tough to do that? I don't know, let's go find out. What does it take to make a machine or a process line smart? So as long as we're in the halls of Rockwell Automation, uh, let's go roam around and see what we can find. Come on, follow me. Iolink, what a great technology. Um, it's, a, it's a serial protocol and it's typically used with our on-machine applications such as sensors. And as we showed upstairs on the uh, contactor line, sensors are really the, the eyes of really any manufacturing process. And so uh, with any sensor, especially the Allen Bradley sensors, um, not only can you wire a sensor into a, a standard on-machine input module, uh, the Allen Bradley sensors also have built inside IO-Link communications capabilities. And so it's just built in. Uh, there's no extra part numbers you have to order. You can either run it as a standard input or as an IO-Link device. How great is that? Um, especially for a uh, original equipment manufacturer, they may want to have different options for their machines where they have a, a basic option and they want to have a smart option. So imagine that, uh, you have to do nothing special, just use the exact same sensor and all you have to do is just use a, a, a different I.O. block module. So what other advantages can you get with I.O. Link? Besides just a 
classic on off like like a sensor you know so my hand here will stop or start the production line um, it can also give you back some valuable diagnostic information uh, so for example like this uh, photo eye not only is it telling me if my hand is uh, in front of here or not see that stop process um, but it'll also tell you how strong that signal is that's being used to detect if something's uh, inside the, or blocking the photo eye or not and why is that important well, imagine if there's some dirt being accumulated on here. Maybe the dirt's causing the uh, photo eye to, to shut off unexpectedly, uh, again, causing unexpected downtime. So if we can alert the operator ahead of time that the sensor is getting getting dirty, uh, during their next round of maintenance cycle, they could put this thing off the index and uh, get this thing up and running right away. Instead of just waiting for the machine to break down and now everybody's trying to troubleshoot and figure out, oh no, what's going on, I'm all going crazy, you gotta keep this thing running. Um, just makes things a lot easier. Uh, so that's kind of the difference between an unintelligent sensor and an intelligent sensor. So IO Link uh, is great for, for a lot of different on machine applications. And one last, last thing about um, IO Link for uh, at least an Allen Bradley device is that we also offer some pre engineered, uh, we call them face plates. They're, they're graphic files that work with our panel view uh, human machine interface panels. So again, as a machine builder, all you have to do is literally just copy, paste, and now you get these pre-made tested graphics that display all this extra information that's coming from an IoT device. So what a great way how to, uh, to make your machines smart. All right, so for more information about IO Link, uh, please visit our website at rockwellautomation.com with the smart devices. So um, now that we've seen uh, at least the uh, uh, IO Link, let's go back up to the, uh, the contactor line to see what other kind of uh, components are out there to, to make a machine smart. Yeah, let's go, follow me. Welcome back. Again, I'm Bill Martin and I'm here at Rockwell Automation's World Headquarters and we're learning how to get things started with SMART. Um, and so in the previous episode, we talked about I.O. Link and how sensors are really the, the eyes of a, of a SMART machine. And so uh, another aspect of SMART is safety. How do we make the operators safe? And not only are we providing uh, protection and safety for the operators, but could a safety device help make a machine smart? Um, let's look at our manufacturing line again for our 100C contactor here at our world headquarters. And uh, let's see what kind of different smart devices for safety they have on here. All right, now that we've seen some safety devices in action, let's let's go roam the halls again of our world headquarters to see what does it take to make a safety device make a machine smart. Come on, follow me. Ah, so now we're looking at some safety devices. So this is guard link technology. What a, what a great technology to help make that device smart. So traditional safety devices like a like key stop or a bolt chain or a safety relay. For an unintelligent device would require a, a lot of wiring. For example, uh, here, this is a small subset of the wiring that would be needed for an unintelligent device. Uh, but with uh, guard link, uh, it gives uh, an original equipment manufacturer another option to, to make their device smart, as well as reduce the, the wiring efforts needed to put on safety components onto the machine. Uh, so for example, with, uh, with um, guard link, they have some smart taps that are red here. And you can connect any electromechanical safety device to it. And what it does is it actually turns that unintelligent device into an intelligent device, like, like this limit switch, for example. Uh, with this being connected in, when it, when it trips, we can see exactly um, which device um, has had a safety event. Now in the past, in an unintelligent machine, somebody pressed an e-stop or again, a limit switch went off, um, people would be scrambling around trying to figure out, oh no, which, which sensor caused this thing, now I gotta reset it, I don't know where it is, um, it's got here somewhere. We spend a lot of, again, uh, unexpected downtime trying to troubleshoot this thing. Now with the guard link technology, it can communicate back via Ethernet IP, and ooh, we'll, we'll talk about that in the future episodes. But anyhow, um, back to guard link, 
I can communicate back to uh, an operator interface panel and tell you exactly which sensor has, has had its uh, uh, safety events. So instead of just trying to scramble around to figure out which one it is, uh, we can know exactly which sensor it is, and we can send the maintenance guy down and fix it uh, right away and get the machine open. Uh, so yeah, not only does it save on wiring, uh, it acts like a, like a Lego lock. You literally just connect in the cables and, and you're done. That's, that's that easy. Uh, so yeah, GuardLink's a, a great way to not only reduce wiring for uh, original equipment manufacturer, but it provides a lot of extra diagnostics for uh, safety sensors that, again, help to, uh, to minimize unplanned downtime. All right, so, uh, ooh, yeah, Ethernet IP. Um, yeah, let's go back up to our role con or to our contractor line and uh, see what Ethernet IP looks like up, up on there. Yeah, come on, follow me. Oh, and by the way, um, if you want some more information on GuardLink, please visit the Smart Device System on rockautomation.com. We're here to learn about how to get started on making machines smart. Um, so our last episode, we talked about uh, safety devices, specifically GuardLink, and how that can help make a machine smart. So this episode, we'd like to look at connectivity. We have all these devices, they have to communicate somehow. Um, and let's see how Ethernet IP can help make a machine smart. Uh, there's a great example over here at our World Contactor line in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So here's a great electrical enclosure um, where we have a lot of different Ethernet IP devices coming into a single place in which the programmable logic controller can now gather all this, this information and do some intelligent decisions with it. But what a bit data is really available with these smart devices that are Ethernet IP. Um, so I'll tell you what, how about we go roam the hallways one more time and uh, let's see what uh, we can find. Let's, um, let's go this way. Ethernet IP, what a, what a great network technology. It's the premier technology for uh, really any automation with a rep automation device. Uh, so with Ethernet IP, um, there's a, a lot of different things we can do with it. Uh, we have our, our safety devices, for example, like the, the light curtains here. I'm not going to interrupt them, but uh, uh, they, they provide a lot of great information. In fact, similar to I.O. Link, uh, they will also tell you that the strength of the signal going back and forth between the, the light curtains. So if these are getting dirty, Again, you uh, can throw out a proactive alarm to a maintenance person to let them know that these are getting dirty, you might want to clean off at the next uh, maintenance cycle. Um, other things that are nice about Ethernet IP is in the event that, say, a forklift happened to hit this, this uh, light bar, um, when you had to replace it, uh, in the past, you would probably have to replace it to get a little laptop, try to figure out, oh, where's the configuration file? I can't find it, I don't know. Um, it's just taking a long time, again, for, uh, for unplanned downtime. Uh, so with Ethernet IP, uh, most ROP automation devices support a technology called automatic device configuration, where you literally just physically swap out the device, re-plug in the Ethernet cable, and the programmable logic controller will re-download automatically uh, all the configuration items back to the, to the smart device. So uh, imagine that, even though we have this complicated, well, perceived complicated smart device for replacement, uh, it's, it's super easy. You can literally just replace it and walk away. Um, and finally, for uh, Ethernet IP, even with the, the guard link technology, like with the safety relays down there, if someone were to get an e stop, or maybe even if we stop our, our light curtain here, uh, we can take uh, uh, statistical information on that. So, for example, we can see, well, that's odd. It seems like on third shift, this, this light bar is being executed multiple times a shift versus first and second shift that they never seem to activate this this light curtain. Um, so maybe we go back and figure out proactively, oh, hey, uh, you know, this particular operator seems to accidentally always lean up against the machine, uh, activating the, the light curtain. Um, so just even simple things like that to uh, help you, again, prevent unplanned downtime. Uh, so um, let's kind of wrap it up our our three-part series of how to get started with, with SMART. Uh, so thank you for watching this series. And again, for more information on SMART components and SMART devices, please visit us, visit us at smartdevices at